Okay. All right. Well, thank you for explaining that. Um, my final question, I mean, I do have some more, but I think we'd better leave it at this, is chapter 13, How False Religion Misrepresents God. And thank you for your time, Lee. I do appreciate it. That's all right. We, honestly, I mean, even if we disagree, looking into the Bible is the best thing that people can do, because the Bible is, has got so many answers for us. So I can, I, even if we disagree on things yeah. and go separate ways, looking into the Bible is still encouraged, obviously. Right. Though what I found with groups like the Christadelphians and the Seventh-day Adventists and the, the Mormons, I've never been one of those groups, but I was involved with the Pentecostal churches. And I got involved in a very extreme Pentecostal church uh, briefly when I lived in London in the 1980s. And what I, what I found is that these people... Um, are very controlling and they tend to say look yes the bible's the word of god but the only person who can interpret that bible is our leader the guy at the top of the pyramid who gets all the tithe money the tithe goes up to the leader and the orders are barked down from him to the people lower down and it's very much a hierarchical system yeah you, you know we don't we don't say that it's okay. completely up to each person what okay. they want to do and how they want to do it as well, long as it's in line with god that's my background. I used to be a oneness Pentecostal, and I tried Baptist groups. I tried a Calvinist group. Um, uh, I tried a few Baptist groups and charismatic groups. And um, what I tended to find was that everyone says they believe the Bible, but in reality, the only interpretation that's accepted is what the leader says. So you can show them a verse that contradicts their teaching completely, and you're wasting your time because they just don't look at the verse. The only thing they are willing to consider is the leader's interpretation of that verse, which can quite often be completely polar op the polar opposite of what the Bible actually says. Yeah, I mean, for instance, I'll give you one. Ex I'll give you one example. You can talk to your blue in the face to the Seventh Day Adventists about the Sabbath, right? Sabbath, Sabbath, Sabbath. They are obsessed with it. Now, Sabbath is rest. It's rest and remembrance. I won't go to the scriptures because we'd be here for some time. Just take oh, it from me. The, the, <laughs> the Sabbath principle in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5 is rest and remembrance. The yeah. Sabbath principle has got nothing to do with going to meetings on a Saturday. So yeah. the whole basis of Seventh-day Adventism, that you have to go to a meeting on a Saturday and not a Sunday, is contrary to the Sabbath teaching. It, it's got yeah, nothing to do, Sabbath, day, Seventh-day right. Adventism has got nothing to do with the Sabbath. Uh, oh. I'd actually say it's a Sabbath-breaking cult. Um, I went to <laughs> a, a um, it wasn't Seventh-day Adventist, but it was um, a Seventh-day um, group in Truro once. And uh, I remember um, a person who was a friend at the time drove me down there and we went into this hall and then after the meeting, they had lunch, so they started putting the cooker on. And, and I said, why are you putting the cooker on? If you're Sabbath keepers, you're not supposed to be doing any cooking on the Sabbath day. But they had an explanation for that. And then after the meeting, obviously the kids that were there would make some mess at the table and put some mess on the floor. So out came the brooms and they were sweeping around the table to clear up all the rubbish. And, you know, the mess that the kids have made. And I said, why are you sweeping on the Sabbath? You're not supposed to be sweeping on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a day of rest. So, you know, they, we, we, we traveled about 20 miles to get to this meeting, first of all. Then they were cooking on the Sabbath. <laughs> um, then they were sweeping up and they said, well, we have to sweep up because we don't own the hall. We only rent it. And if we don't hand it back in a um, clean position, we'll um we won't be able to have the hall any longer and i said but you're breaking the sabbath and so that's the way it goes people really at their heart follow their leaders it's a form of idolatry they follow what they can see they don't see jesus they don't see jehovah so most of these groups and my background's in the pentecostal movement but not just the extreme pentecostals you could also say the seventh day adventists the mormons um, scientology all of these groups what you have is a form of idolatry you're following the leader the man you see or sometimes the woman you see at the top and and often it, it turns into a form of abuse 
where the person at the top emotionally abuses people, then they financially abuse people. And once they've done that, and they've got all the tides going up to them, and the, the preacher's got a Bentley, not in every case, but in some other cases, then other types of abuse happens. And we read about these things in the press, don't we? Um, can yeah, we look at chapter 13, How False Religion Misrepresents God? Yep. Yeah. It's on page uh, 56 and 57. There's a picture of a, a black preacher holding a Bible in one hand and a machine gun in the other. There's uh, a preacher, another preacher, a white preacher, blessing a soldier with his hand on the soldier's head. Yeah, I can see that. There's a, Le there's a soldier probably going over the top. He's got a cross around his neck. He's obviously an allied soldier from the helmet. He's carrying what looks like a Lee Enfield rifle. And I thought that meant the First World War, but apparently Lee Enfield rifles were also used in the Second World War, so... He's a, a soldier from that sort of time period. I'd say probably First World War soldier by, by, by looking at the backpack on his back. And then at the top of the page, there's a Crusader knight in armour yep. with a lance, a Crusader flag, and he's riding a white horse. It's kind of critical of religion. And your book is really criticising religions for their involvement in warfare. Yes. Okay, section five at the bottom of page 56 is quite brief. It says, false religion does not reflect God's love. Religions yep. have misrepresented God in many ways. One notorious way has been their involvement in war. To see one example, play the video, then discuss the questions that follow. Question one, what position did many churches take during World War II? Question two, how do you feel about the position they took? Now, I, I will agree there is tremendous hypocrisy in much organised religion when it comes to uh, politics and warfare. Yep. I do believe that in certain circumstances, uh, Christians can fight. Um, you know, if you were to see a child being hurt or bullied by a gang in the street, um, I hope you would pick up a stick or a rock and try and, try and beat the gang off. It's not a sin for you to hurt another person who's trying to hurt a child. No, that, that, that's, that's agreed. That's agreed. Um, ag we agree on that. Um, and I will also agree there's a lot of hypocrisy in religion. A lot of religion, a lot of, sorry, um, a lot of wars are fought today for political reasons, for money reasons. Yeah. Uh, they're Definitely. not fought for moral reasons. Um, no. And even, you know, you... you there are good and bad points in every single war. Mm. Um, so it's a complicated issue. What I don't like about this is whilst you criticise the churches, and I think quite rightly so, for their hypocrisy in getting involved in warfare, and I, I can't deny that you make some good points in this book regarding that, when it says, what position did many churches take during World War II, which was a pro-war position, in Australia, according to the Watchtower for the 1st of June 1947, and that's page 173 of the yearly bound volumes, I, I, I don't have an original Watchtower, but I downloaded in PDF form every Watchtower from 1947. It's quite easy to get all the Watchtowers back to the first ones in PDF form. In that Watchtower yeah. article, it talks about the situation in Australia. It talks about errors that were made in Australia by the Bethel headquarters and how young people who went for Bethel service were sent to work in military canteens on military bases serving the soldiers. So I agree Jehovah's Witnesses did not pick up arms in Australia in the Second World War, but they did serve soldiers in canteens. And it also says that they were, quote, working in machine shops producing instruments of war. And I found out that although the company's not named, it's the Taylorcraft Aircraft Corporation, which was owned by a wealthy Jehovah's Witness called Mr. Taylor. And during the Second World War, Taylorcraft Aircraft Corporation only produced military aircraft for the Australian Air Force. So... Being a Jehovah's Witness, he employed many Jehovah's Witnesses anyway. But the Watchtower article talks about young people going for Bethel service being sent 
to work in canteens on military bases and working in machine shops producing instruments of war, which I found out is the Taylorcraft Aircraft Corporation making military aircraft. So Jehovah's Witnesses were active with the churches and supporting in Australia. I'm only talking about the situation in Australia, supporting the military in the Second World War. Uh, clearly, you've, you've uh, obviously done your research. Now, that's obviously news to me, because um, obviously I didn't know that. Yeah. But one thing that we will always say is, uh, especially because our work is banned in numerous places, and especially in places like um, South Korea, sometimes military service is mandatory. And obviously our, 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 the, the young brothers out there will, will refuse. But they will ask other if there is some other way they can serve, their, well, not the debt, but rather than do it in the military, is there another way they can do it? Some would feel comfortable doing it in a canteen, perhaps just serving food, because they will say, I'm serving food. Others might feel differently, I'm serving food to soldiers who are going to go out and kill people. That would be, I mean, back then, I can't say what the beliefs and how they, how they, um, What's the, what's the, the, the position the, the position of Jehovah's yeah. Witnesses was generally pacifist during the Second yeah, we, World we, War. We, we but but yeah. and uh, there was an exception in Australia where the Australian Bethel headquarters, um, as I say, they sent people to work for Taylorcraft, a company they would have known well because it was owned by a wealthy Jehovah's Witness, making military aircraft. So... All, all I'm saying is when it when it says what what position did many churches take during World War II, um, I think you have to be honest and say, well, the position of Jehovah's Witnesses in both world wars was pro-military. I think the situation is worse in the First World War. Uh, that watchtower from 1947 deals with the situation in Australia during the Second World War, which, of course, finished in 1945 two years before that watchtower but in the first world war you you have a worse situation where in the watchtower of the 15th of may 1918 page 6257 of the reprints um the watchtower article probably written by judge rutherford or under his orders promotes the purchase of the liberty bond or the liberty loan uh, which was uh, a loan money that you could give the American government to support the military in the First World War. Now, Rutherford published the Finnish mystery. It had seditious comments against the American government in it. He knew he was going to be arrested. So just before his arrest on the 15th of May 1918, this Watchtower article came out promoting the purchase of the Liberty Bond or the Liberty Loan. And it led to the Standfast movement. The Standfast movement were Bible students who left, who refused to have anything to do with Rutherford because they said, we are pacifist. We, we must be Standfast against the purchase of the Liberty Bond or the Liberty Loan. I'll just read that Watchtower article very briefly. It says, the people of our association are not against the government nor against the Liberty Loan. Our thought is that the liberty loan is not a religious question, but purely one pertaining to the affairs of government, and that each person should be left to the free exercise of his individual conscience as to whether he will or will not purchase a liberty bond. Our views are very well expressed in a statement given to the public press some weeks ago as follows. The International Bible Student Association is not against the liberty loan. Many of its members have bought and hold liberty bonds. And on the right-hand side of the page, there's another section that talks about Bethel workers clubbing together to buy a Liberty Bond between them. It says, members of our association who have some personal means have bought Liberty Bonds, including tabernacle workers who are paying 25% of their monthly allowance to purchase a bond. Now, Rutherford did this because he, was knew, he, he knew he was going to be arrested. And so he wanted to say in court, look, I'm supporting the American military okay it was only um, america that was selling liberty bonds so rutherford wrote this article for his american readers um saying it's a conscience matter okay whether you buy a bond or not but obviously strongly encouraging 
um, the purchase of bonds. And this led to a split in the movement. On the, on the West Coast, about a third of the Bible students left in disgust because they said we must be standfast against the purchase of the Liberty Bond. Well, I've got to admit, like I say, it's, it's, it, these are all different. These are things that I've only heard for the first time. Are you uh, writing them down? Are you writing down the references so you can check it up? Uh, well, what I wanted you to do was actually send them to me, because you've obviously got my numbers. So if you can send me the references, I'd love to. But obviously, the only thing I would say is, obviously, back then, they could very well have made different decisions that we made now. We have made changes over the years because other things have come to light when we've actually dug a bit deeper into the Bible to try and look into things. But there's no doubt witnesses have done things incorrectly in the past. <laughs> there's, right. there's no getting away from that. We're not a perfect organisation by any means. Um, the, the stance now definitely would be we, we do not take up arms. We do not in any way... Um, put forward any part of the military or any part of or encouraging it or doing any way to help it in any way. So if they may have had different views back then, perhaps not realising that actually what the Bible says was that we should be against war that is not backed by God. Um, but there is no doubt that as a, as a group and as, a, as and as individuals, we do make mistakes as well because we're as imperfect as, as everyone else is. So... It is a shame, unfortunately, that there's no doubt some witnesses have made those sort of mistakes in the past. But at the end of the day, we're all going to have to put up with our mistakes to, to God anyway. God will judge us whether we're uh, righteous or not with our mistakes. Um, Hopefully we can learn from them as well. Yeah. I'm not really interested in individual Jehovah's Witnesses. Is the teaching of the Watchtower Society. Um, I mean, for instance, regards, about 20... If you now, they would say we've... we've we are, we are obviously against war and we will do everything we can. Like I say, we've got no. people right now, this minute, that are meant to be in military service but they've refused, so they're either in prison... I'm, 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 no, I'm service. not discussing individual Jehovah's Witnesses. The, 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 the teaching of the Watchtower Corporations, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York and the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. Now, one of those corporations, and I don't know which accepted shares from James McCann as a gift. He, they accepted over 5 million shares in the Rancam Engine Corporation. Rancam is a, uh, a company that makes small ceramic engines that are often used in drones. And they right. have ceramic parts in because if you have... Um, I, was, I, I, I have said in the past... Um, I thought that they were jet engines. Some of them are jet engines, but a lot of them are propeller engines that are used in drones. They get very, very hot, and therefore you need a cooling system to cool to cool the engine. So if you make parts of the engine out of ceramics rather than steel, it doesn't need to be cooled because the ceramics can go to incredibly high temperatures, and unlike metal, it's not going to warp. Now, obviously, small ceramic engines uh, many of them would be actually propeller driven um, rather than jets but small ceramic engines to be used in drones are used for military purposes mm. and the Rancam engine corporation engines um, are, are used in drones so my question is why did the watchtower accept these shares knowing that this company has um, military customers. Surely if they're Jehovah's organization, they'd say, we are so moral, we are so upright, we are Jehovah's organization. Mr. James McCann, we reject your offer of 5 million shares in the Rand Cam Engine Corporation. I mean, they just accepted it. To me, a lot of organized religion, the older I get, I'm sorry to say this. I do believe in God. I do believe the Bible is the word of God. But the older I get, the more convinced I am that organized religion, once you've got a hierarchy and a buildings and a, a system of leaders, it just becomes more and more corrupt as the years go by. And and very often, a, a, a lot of what religious people end up doing is, is covering up all the scandals. Um, oh, I agree with you there. Some of the scandals that have come out are... are 
horrific. So, but 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 why did the Watchtower accept shares in the Rancam Engine Corporation, knowing that they make um, engines? And I, I I think I mistakenly said jet engines in the past. Um, propeller. They're mostly propeller engines for drones. Well, the only thing I can say, because obviously I don't know anything about this, um, because as far as I'm concerned, we don't have, like I say, we don't go into business with other people. We're, we're not a business. We're a charity, but we're not a business. Um, well, yeah. So I, I honestly don't have anything that I can come back with because I don't know anything about it. I'm not going to say anything and try and black my way out of it when actually yeah. I don't know anything about okay. it. So I... I honestly can't say anything about that because I okay. don't know anything about it. Well, well that's, um, that's, that's honest. I do know that the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Britain is listed on the British Charities Commission website. But the two main Watchtower corporations, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania and the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York are not charities. They are they're what's called not-for-profit businesses. And the mm. Pennsylvania organization was incorporated, I believe, in December 1881 as a not-for-profit business. And both of them issue shares. I don't know if you know that. The two watchdog corporations have shareholders. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's what I, that's what I heard for early on. <laughs> okay. Um, the final thing, and I won't take any more of your valuable time, Lee, is the Henrietta M. Riley Trust. She was a woman who died in 1945. She was very wealthy. All of her assets were liquidated, turned into shares, which are which is administered by a Detroit bank. It's a self-owning company. Obviously, Henrietta M. Riley can't own it because she's dead. Yeah. And <laughs> the the money wasn't donated to anyone. It's a it's an autonomous company called the Henrietta M. Riley Trust. You can look them up on the IRS tax records. IRS means Inland Revenue Service. It's the the tax system for America, and to get tax exemptions, exemption, Henrietta M. Riley Trust has to fill out um, uh, the relevant IRS form every year. So you can see their published accounts, you can see where they have invested their money and who the sole beneficiary is. It's the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York. And every year they donate between roughly half a million and three quarters of a million dollars to the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York. Um, now, the Henrietta M. Raleigh Trust um, is administered by a Detroit bank, which administers it for a fee, doesn't do it for free. And they have a standard portfolio of investments that, you know, most other financial advisors would invest in. But some of those investments are in arms companies such as Boeing, Northrop Grumman and Halliwell, which make military equipment. So why has the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York been accepting money since 1945, some of which is from arms companies? Well, again, I honestly can't say why. I can't say why they've accepted it. The only thing I would say is that you should be able to actually contact the branch yourself. Because actually, it would probably be a better question to actually ask them uh, directly. Because again, I've got no knowledge and I'm not going to say anything. Yes. Because I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. So again, like you said, I'm, I'm going to not bow out. That's not the way I want to put it. But I'm not going to try and defend anything okay. to you when I don't actually know anything about it. Okay. I, that's I, not going to help me. It's not going to help you either, is yes, it? Yes, I have written to the Watchtower. Uh, is it Chelmsford that your new headquarters is based at? The hundred and fifty yeah. million pound new 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 building complex at Chelmsford. Um, I've written to them and they wrote back and they said, "Go on JW.org and do some research." Oh, I'm a bit surprised about that response. <laughs> uh, when I spoke to people at the Carts, I got exactly the same response. If I asked any question on the Bible. The response was, I am the one in the wrong. I need to go on jw.org and do some research. But look, thank you, Lee, for your time. I'm very grateful That's to you, sir. All right. no, thank you for, and I'll say, as, as much as we might still disagree on things, uh, we can only encourage people to read the Bible because the Bible does have good in it. And um, if people followed some of the things that said in the Bible, the world would be a much better place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, continuing it, if you ever feel like coming down to one of our meetings... 
You, um, do you know where the Kingdom Hall is? I'm in Plymouth. Ah! Oh. I'm quite well, somewhere well, away from you. But, but if you want to speak on the phone again, I'd be happy to talk about the Kingdom, blood transfusions and the faithful and discreet slave. If you want to speak again, I can speak any day, except I can never speak any time on a Monday or a Thursday. But as long as you give me plenty of notice by 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 text, never voicemail, um, I'd be happy to discuss one or more of those topics. Not a problem. Um, that'll be lovely. No, right. thanks for your time, Robert. Thank you, Lee. Like I say, keep 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 looking into the Bible because it's definitely worth it. And if you find that I'm sure there is a Kingdom Hall down in Plymouth somewhere, and if you find one, by all means visit there and give the meetings a go. If you're not interested, then by all means. I leave don't the go market. to. I do not go to religious meetings. I stopped attending evangelical church in 2010 in total disgust. Ah. I don't attend religious meetings. I talk to religious people, but I found attending a meeting is just a waste of time. No, that's fair enough. That's 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 fine. Like, but you're not the first person to say that to me, so don't worry the hell here. Okay. All right. Thanks, Lee. Bye. No worries, brother. Have a good day.